Okay, June 8th, uh, 2015. So I know I've said it in American way and in English. <coughs> right. So, well, this is my shed. Well, it will be my shed for the next few weeks. Chains on shop, workshop owner's manual. Some people like them, some people hate them. Um, I'm using this as a reference, and what else? Anyway, I got a feed bit for like seven quid. Um, so I've been using that as a reference, but most of it I've been taken apart by eye, and I don't think it covers disassembly of the gearbox. This is everything that's in the gearbox. Uh, and I've literally had to take everything out to get to this. Yep, this is the diff. It sits in. I'll show you. So it's a gearbox housing. And on this side sits fifth gear. So there's two cogs here, and that's fifth gear. Fifth gear and all its associated bits are in there. And this tub fits on the back. It's almost as if they designed it as an afterthought. There's probably a reason why they put a fifth gear on the end of here. I don't know. Um, that's where the differential sits, that thing. And then this is the bell housing. This mates to the engine. And I'm back. So the diff sat in there. And this plate here. Well, that sits in there like that. It needs a bit of persuasion because there's some uh, guide collets. Anyway, then your gear towers sit in there. So that is your lay shaft. I think it's a lay shaft. I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. That is your drive shaft. That comes from your engine. And your clutch goes on there. That is your reverse gear that just sits woo, sits freely on that bearing that on that uh, rod there. Uh, gearbox, uh, sorry, gear uh, linkage. So that goes off to your gear stick. Uh, what else? Various bolts. There's loads of these heavy duty Torx bolts. No thread lock. One of them. Has a blue head. And the one with the blue head goes in this position here. The rest of them, the normal ones that are black heads, just go all the way around except these two uh, 10 millimeter head bolts, which go sorry there and there. There's probably a reason why the, those two are, are ten millimeter. Yeah, that's just a straight cut gear. You can tell how many times you've. Uh, I might not be able to focus, but you can tell how many times you've uh, tried to go in by how rough that is, <laughs> or how chewed off rather that is. Um, so I'm assuming then that. When the you select uh, reverse gear, it mates with that spline there because it's also straight cut. Yeah, there's a lot of these needle bearings. For example, these needle bearings were inside this um, the fifth gear, and as you can probably see in there, if we can get some light on it. <coughs> there's needle bearings in there, needle roller bearings in there. Careful with them. Twatting them with a hammer or anything. But the main thing we're focusing on is this bad boy. Now, these races, or races, sorry, sit inside there. So we managed to tap that out with a screwdriver and a hammer carefully. And the other one obviously sits on there. And they mate up flush like that. Then you're probably thinking, well, it's a fine bearing, but post inspection, I don't think this will pick it up. 
there's actually scoring. You can see score marks. Damn thing won't focus anyway. There's score marks on the inside. They're very, very, very little score marks. Oh, that one you can definitely see score marks. So that is probably it. I mean, the bearings themselves, you, you know, you, you, they don't, they look okay. They feel okay. I mean, the cages are a little bit loose, but that's not a problem. But we've hit another problem. Uh, the engineering company I'm ordering them from, I've managed to find the part number on the back of the bearing race, so you have to take the back of the bearing race off to view the part number, or because this is the this is the bugger. The race is universal for all models of this bearing but there are two models or I think it's three models of this bearing there's a metric model and an imperial model now these are push fit on there's the you can't take that off look that's the whole weight on it there they don't slide off so these are probably um, cold pressed onto the differential housing um, so, guess where the part number for this is? Yeah, underneath. Sodding typical, isn't it? Because I rang them up and they said, oh yeah, we've got these in stock, but we need that bit as well, the roller bit. I'm like, uh, okay. Then they said, uh, well, it's either metric or imperial. And my money is on that it's metric. It's German. Bloody typical. You'd order a metric and go, oh, it's an imperial. Oh, we haven't got those in stock. They'll be another two weeks. Anyway, I'm rambling. Okay, so... I suppose I should show you the tools. Um, two screwdrivers, pry bar, an extra bar to go on the end of a ratchet. That's always useful. Uh, impact wrench. Um extension bar you'll need that's a 32 millimeter socket that gets those steak nuts off that's on the end of each um, shaft that's sticking out of here um, a soft faced hammer which isn't here it's somewhere uh, you'll need uh, where's that bolt gone you need one of these that's an M4 uh, bolt and you see it's bent. We've used that to tap out a few uh, split uh, roll pins that are holding a few um, linkages on the shafts for the gearbox. Just so you can pull the, the assembly out. And there's also an M3 one. Oh, hang on, no, sorry. That's an M5. That's an M4. There's two different sizes of roll pins to go through the... Uh, like that one there. Yeah, that's one we've tapped out. Ooh, shit, steady, steady. <laughs> also, we've there's another bolt floating around here. We've used that to um, tap on these, the heads of these. So basically we make them head to head. And then you get a hammer, tap it a few times, and that just cracks the threads off a wee bit. Then you get your um, Torx drivers, so there's... That's a T Halfords T30. Uh, there's a T50. There's another T somewhere. I think that'll be a T40. Yeah, that one gunked up, unfortunately. But money's on. Money's on T40 because it's between those two sizes. Ten millimeter half inch. I would advise half inch drive because some of these bolts on um, are on mad crazy so using a 3 8 drive might be a ball ache and you might end up snapping some tools um what else oh yeah starter motor so this is the bolt that caused the problems I have reformed the thread on this 
And someone said, no, you don't do that, it's the right, you know, it's got a special size. You know, well, just put the thread lock on it, it'll be fine, it's for the starter motor. I had to reform the thread on that because it was wonky. And I had to reform the threads in there using a tap set because it was also wonky. So, it's either seen a lot of heat and expanded and contracted or the last person who put it on when they were changing the clutch made a hash of it. Anyway. Um, the bell housing is held onto the gearbox itself by these 10mm bolts long. There's three long ones and 14 short ones. And the long ones go uh, in these three positions here. So there's a position down there, there, and there's another one somewhere. Oh no, sorry. Four long ones, I tell a fib. Four long ones and 13 short ones. So the long ones go there, 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 and there. And then the rest are all short ones. Right. So, this is the mess, the carnage <laughs> of taking a freaking gearbox apart. Don't say you weren't warned. Really, really I did warn you.